Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a Sangaku puzzle. Three circles with radius r are inscribed in a semicircle with radius x, and we're supposed to find r in terms of x. So this is an easy-ish Sangaku puzzle, but it's fun to solve. I'll include some links in the description down below for your reference. Let's get started. So as always, we're going to start by making some connections. So I'm going to go ahead and start at the center of the semicircle and we'll make a connection to the center of the circle. Just one of the circles. OK, so let's go ahead and try that again. See if we get a good one. Here we go. OK, so what do we know about this length? So, well, that's the radius of the semicircle, which is X, right? So it's given as X. OK, great. What about the radius of the circle? It's given as R. So since this length is R, then if you subtract, if you subtract from the, that from X, you're going to be getting X minus R. Great. So this length is X minus R. Well, maybe I shouldn't mark it that way. Just write X minus R. Okay. That looks better. So from this point to that point, it's going to be X minus R. Well, what else do we know? Well, I can just go ahead and drop perpendiculars here from the center so that I can make a rectangle here which is going to be helpful. So let's go ahead and connect these two centers as well. And obviously, if you consider the diameter of the semicircle, then we're getting a rectangle here. And half of the rectangle is going to be a right triangle, right? Great. OK, so this is a right angle. Now, what I know is that this is R, and this is also R, and this is also R, and this is also R. So I basically have like a 2R by R rectangle. Right, a rectangle whose base is 2r and whose height is r. Now, what am I going to do with that? Well, I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem, right? Where am I going to use the Pythagorean theorem? In this right triangle here. Let me go ahead and shade it for you so you can see it. So this is the right triangle that I would like to use. Let's go ahead and write down the Pythagorean theorem using that right triangle. And remember, our goal is to solve for r in terms of x. So we're trying to isolate r here. But let's go ahead and write down our equation first. The base is 2r, so 2r quantity squared plus r squared is going to equal the hypotenuse squared, which is x minus r squared. At this point, you know, a lot of people are just going to go, go ahead and expand this. And let's go ahead and do it. This is going to be 4r squared plus r squared, and that is equal to x squared minus 2xr plus r squared. In this case, you know, you can just go ahead and cancel out the r squared, and this is going to give you a quadratic equation. Let's go ahead and put everything on the same side for r squared, and then I'll bring the 2xr over. That's going to be a plus sign, 2xr, and then I'll have minus x squared is equal to 0. Now, since this is a quadratic equation in r, I can actually solve it. And it's also quadratic in x, but I'm not interested in solving for x. I'm interested in solving for r. So let's go ahead and solve this using quadratic formula. OK, how do we go about solving it? Well, we're just going to use the formula, right? So this is what it looks like. r is equal to negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 4x squared minus 4a c. Now, since I have the c as negative, I can just go ahead and negate the negative and make it a positive, so on and so forth. And all over 2 times a, which is 8. Great. So that's the answer. You can leave it at that. Nope. We're going to simplify this because that's not in the simplest form, right? OK. So what am I going to do here? Well, you can just go ahead and add these up because those are like terms. So 4 times 4 times x squared is going to give me 16x squared plus 4x squared is going to be 20x squared. Now, here's one thing to remember. We're not going to use the minus sign because we're talking about length here. Come on. If you use the minus sign, you're going to get a negative length, which is not good. So we're going to go with the positive. So how does this look? Well, I can just go ahead and write it as negative 2x plus. Now, OK, square root of 20 is 2 root 5. So I can write it as 2 root 5 multiplied by x all over 8. Obviously, you can divide everything by 2, right? And uh, if you do that, you're going to get something like root 5x minus 2x divided by 4. OK, so we got the answer pretty much, right? But we can put it in a nicer form, right? Because it said r in terms of x. And r is in terms of x, but let's go ahead and do the following. All right. So I can just take out the x. So it's going to look like, you know, this divided by that 
multiply by x. So r is kind of like a multiple of x. In other words, so in other words, r over x is a constant, right? And this gives us the answer. But I want to say something else before we finish. I'd like to give you another perspective, right? Isn't that going to be cool? Well, if you remember, we did get an equation here, right? 2r quantity squared plus r squared is equal to x minus r squared. So let's go ahead and take that equation. So let's go ahead and write it down here. 2r quantity squared plus r squared is equal to x minus r quantity squared. Now, we got the answer and it looks fine, but let me go ahead and give you a second perspective on this one, okay? How do we go? Well, let's go ahead and add these up. This is 4r squared, this is r squared, so that's going to give me 5r squared. And that is equal to x minus r quantity squared. Now, notice that we turn this into a quadratic, but you don't need to, because this is already a completed square. I can just go ahead and square root both sides. And when I do, I'm just going to take the... Uh, what is What am I going to take into consideration? <laughs> Okay, I just can't say it. Okay, I'll take into consideration the fact that uh, the lengths all have to be positive. All right? So, if you take the square root, you're going to get the square root of 5r is equal to x minus r, or square root of 5r is just the opposite of x minus r, which is negative x plus r. Okay? Obviously, if you go ahead and solve this one, since our goal is to solve for, what's it called? r. I can just go ahead and write it and then kind of factor it, square root of 5 plus 1 times the quantity r is equal to x. And then r from here is going to be x over square root of 5 plus 1. At this point, of course, I would like to rationalize the denominator. And how do I do that? Well, I can just go ahead and multiply the top and the bottom by root 5 minus 1 and root 5 minus 1. And this is going to give me the same answer, which is square root of 5 minus 1 over 4 multiplied by x. And basically, that's going to be it. If you go ahead and use the other solution, of course, you want to make the x positive. Then you would get something like r minus root 5r. But notice that root 5r is greater than r, so you're going to be getting a negative quantity. So that solution will be rejected. Therefore, we come to the end of this video. All right? I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.